Up, up, up. to Vintage Garage. Glad you're here. We have a full show today. The red paint on the Royale has now had a week to dry and it's time to put the white trim on the car. First we need to install the Zeus fasteners in the body. That'll allow us to mount the body on the chassis and make sure that all the body parts are perfectly aligned before we lay out the trim. After that we need to lay out the white trim on the body, mask it, and then we'll paint it. While the paint is drying, we'll go through the Lola T492 and get it ready for the race at Mosport. We need to take the body off the car and check it over and make sure everything's ready for the race. We'll also fire it up and make a lot of noise so that should be fun. Lastly, after the white trim is dried on the Royale, we'll fit the body to the chassis and mount the nose badge. That's the final step in the trim of the car. So stay tuned, we have a full show, glad you're here. This car is a 1968 Lotus 51 Formula Ford. It's built in roughly the same time period as the Royale that we're painting. These are the number balls on the car, and much like the Royale, half the number ball has to be on the cockpit surround and half the number ball has to be on the under tray. We're now over at the Royale RP2, this is the body that we painted last week. And now we need to make sure that the body is perfectly lined up on the chassis and that the cockpit section and the under tray are aligned against each other. In order to do that, we're going to install the Zeus fasteners in the body. This hole is where the Zeus fastener was mounted originally. We drilled it out so that we could paint the car. Now we're going to put a new fastener back in the hole. It's always worrisome to use a razor knife around a brand new paint job, but we're going to have to do it. The paint buildup and so on has made it so that the Zeus fastener can't fit flush on the body. We have a nice alignment here and the body is set correctly front to rear. So now we're going to install this. We have to uh, radius the hole a little bit so that the Zeus fastener will fit flush there. Now we have a nice flush finish on the Zeus fastener. Using a 3 8 drill with a 1 8 drill bit mounted. We want to clean the paint out of the rivet holes and we're going to rivet the Zeus fastener in place. We're going to use aluminum rivets, steel are stronger, but in this application the Zeus fastener itself really holds itself to the car and what's more important is rust prevention. We want to be sure that uh, the rivets we use don't rust because the car will be running the rain. And we want to be careful not to scratch the new paint. When the rivet pops, the handle will jump a little bit, and we've got to be careful to hold it off the car. Oh, 
Okay, we've got a nice flush finish on that and we're all set. Now we can see right now that that's pulled the body in and that's exactly what we want it to do because we want the number ball to be on the body the way the body's really going to be mounted on the car. Now we'll move around to the other side of the car and repeat the process for the other Zeus fastener. Okay, we finished putting in the Zeus fasteners. While we were at it, we put in four in the tail section, one at each corner that hold the tail section on. So now we want to lay out the number balls. We start with a piece of cut vinyl, a 15 inch diameter circle, which is just about the right size for one of these cars. You know, we're not going to use masking tape to lay out the uh, mask for the number ball. We're going to use this product by 3M. It's a scotch plastic tape. It's more flexible than masking tape and it also makes a better seal so the paint can't run underneath it. I just follow the edge of the white as good as I can. When we get to the masking tape at the bottom, we have to take it off and advance it up the line a little bit. And then we can take off the white number ball altogether. Now we very carefully go along, especially focusing on the inside edge of the tape. Make sure that we have a really good seal so that no paint can get underneath the new vinyl tape. We'll double check that again before we before we paint the car. And I usually put down a line of traditional masking tape too. It's been a week since we painted the red. There's two reasons for waiting a week before you paint the white. You want the red to be quite dry so that the red doesn't bleed into the white and make it pink. And also, you don't want to have the red pull off when you lift the tape. Now we don't want to leave this tape on here more than a few hours, so once we get the car all masked up, we want to immediately paint it. We don't want to leave it sitting around. Okay, now use a razor knife on the edge to make the edge between where the body sections are going to have to come apart. We've finished the masking of the number ball on the left side of the car and now we're going to mask the number ball on the front of the car. We've set the nose badge on the car just for a point of reference. We're going to glue it down later. And we just keep it around. We're almost to the top again. Let's move that piece of tape. Okay, and we can take off the number ball and we'll carefully put the nose badge away. Okay, now we'll apply a roll of regular masking tape as before. Purpose again is to make our edge a little wider and also to give a good sealing surface for the paper that we're going to put down to mask the car. Okay now we've finished masking all of the white number balls on the car. We put the number ball on the side and also on the nose. Now we need to take the body off the car move it into the paint booth and continue the masking process. 
in areas right like right here where the body has a very sharp bend in it it's very difficult to get any tape to lay flat when you come around that corner we really don't want this area up here to be white either we want a nice sharp line right along here of the white so we're going to start again with the 3M tape just try to make a nice straight line that's a fixed distance from the curve so that it'll look sharp. Okay, now we turned over the main cockpit section so that we can work on the underside of it. And we need to make a very straight edge where the number circle's going to join the under tray. Again, not only is it to give a nice crisp edge, but if we don't make a seal here, the entire underside of the body will get white overspray on it. Now that the masking of the body is finished, we want to build a cocoon around each of the two pieces. What I like is this paper drop cloth. Uh, you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. It costs about two bucks. find where our circles are and open up a little window so we can, can paint the part. We continue running the masking tape around the Circle. Actually, it's a half circle at this point. We're working on the under tray, making sure that we don't have any air leaks in our finished product. Okay, that finishes masking of the nose circle. This is actually the most visible point on the car. This and the nose badge are what people are going to look at because they're standing above it and it's on the front of the car. So we've got to be careful that that's really uh, a nice sharp circle. Well, we finished the hard part. The masking of the bodywork is completed now. Now comes the fun part. We're going to mix some white paint. We're going to spray the number balls. If you missed last week's show, we'll give you a quick review. We're using DuPont Chroma 1. It's a very durable paint. It's called a two-part paint. It's similar to an epoxy. It has a color part and a single stage activator. There's actually a third part that's the reducer. In this case, we're going to use a mid-temp reducer. We use this Rubbermaid uh, one-quart plastic bottle as our mixing bottle. After mixing the paint, rather than stir it, I like to shake it. These are very inexpensive. You can get them at a grocery store or at Walmart. And uh, it's a good way to mix the paint. The last thing is, is that whenever we use this paint or mix this paint, we always use a respirator. In this case, we have a 3M respirator.
We put the last coat of white paint on the car about an hour ago. Since it's a two-part paint, it tends to dry real quickly, and that's one of the nice things about it. It dries before there's a chance to get any dirt or dust in it. So what we do is we test the area around the white ball just to see if we're going to leave fingerprints on the paper, sort of to test if the paint is dry enough to uh, start taking off the masking tape. We don't want to let the car dry overnight. We put so much paint on the white balls that there's quite a thick layer of paint along the edge. If we let that dry overnight, that paint will be so tough that when we try to take off the masking tape, we'll tear the edge of the paint and it won't make a nice sharp edge. I'm going to use the scissors real carefully. I'm going to have a look under there and hopefully it's still red with no white. trying to get a edge of the masking tape very carefully where I can get a start taking that off. Again what we're trying to do here is not do anything sudden that's gonna mess up the paint and also not drag anything wet through the red. Be careful that doesn't drag in the paint. The paint's very thick here. We've now finished removing all the masking tape and all the blue vinyl tape, and the number balls came out great. Each one of them has a nice shine, no drips or run, and we have a pretty nice edge around all of them. So we're real pleased with the final paint job. Now we have to resist the urge to start cleaning up the paint booth because now is when we damage the paint by dragging something through it. So we're going to let it cure for another three hours or so, after which time it'll be safe to handle. In the meantime, we're going to go back into the shop and we're going to start work on the Lola T492 Sports 2000 to get it ready for Mosport. This is the car that we're going to take to Mosport for the very finished festival at the end of the month. Today we need to start getting the car ready for the race. We haven't driven the car since a race last summer, so we need to completely go through the car and make sure it's ready. It's really a two-man job, but we got a man and a dog here. So we're probably going to be able to get it. sort of lifts off. Let's go over and have a look at the Lola in some detail. The first thing you notice about the car is that it's about the same size as a Formula Ford, except that it's been widened to hold both a driver and a passenger. Also, the front half of the car is of monocoque construction, whereas a Formula Ford would be all tube frame. The brake and clutch master cylinders are mounted up front, very similar to a Formula Ford. And there's air ducting that brings cool air in through the front bodywork to the front brakes. The front suspension is a double wishbone suspension with a single coilover shock. And the brake, clutch, and accelerator pedals are visible through this panel. 
There's a balance bar on the brake pedal that allows you to set the brake bias front and rear. For safety, there's a front rollover bar that's braced to the front monocoque that provides extra protection for the driver. There's also a tall center-mounted mirror that provides a good view behind the car. There's an MSD unit mounted that provides spark and also has a rev limiter. There's the camera mount that we mounted last time. We plan to get some good in-car video from this car. The driver's compartment is nice and tight and everything is within arm's reach. The driver's seat is very narrow. We may have to lose 20 pounds by most port in order to drive the car very well. The engine is a 2-liter Ford single overhead cam engine with a single two-barrel Weber carburetor. Ahead of the engine you see the radiator cap on the swirl pot for the cooling system. Behind the engine is an oil catch tank and all the breather lines are routed to that tank. There's also a horizontally mounted oil cooler at the very rear of the car and the car has both a brake and rain light. We're not expecting to find anything wrong because we already did a post-race checkout before we parked the car last year. So it's more or less just a double check that everything looks okay and also gives us a chance to protect the car against corrosion again. Everything seems nice and tight on the right rear, so let's move over to the left rear. More of the same over here. General clean up. Down link is nice and tight. Lower the arm looks nice and clean, no rust. Up in the left front, we do more of the same. Wipe down and clean up all of the plated parts. This is the ducting to the front brakes that we talked about when we were going around the car. This has, there's a hole in the bodywork that lines up with that to bring air into the front brakes. While we're here, we take a look at the front brake pads. They look good. First thing we notice at the right front of the car is there's corrosion on the brake master cylinders. It wasn't there when we put the car away. It's happened within the last couple of months of sitting in the shop. Now that we checked over the car, let's fire it up and see how it runs. We put it away running, but it hasn't been run in uh, oh, four or six months, something like that. So the first thing I do is I put a little race gasoline directly in the carburetor. There's no choke, so uh, I like to get a little gas in the carburetor. So we don't have to uh, turn it over so long before we start. So let's see what we've got. I'm going to turn on the ignition. Find the throttle. Got it there. And we'll hit the gas and we'll see what happens. is thoroughly dry on the white balls. So we carefully moved the body from the paint shop over to the workshop. And it looks real nice. We're real pleased with it. We're now going to put the nose badge on the car. It lined up essentially by eye. It's very hard to get a good measurement because of the curvature of the body. So it's one of those things that has to look nice by eye. And we're making a couple of registration marks here so that when we move it we'll be able to get it back in the same place. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
And I'm going to set it aside. And I'm going to wipe the area real lightly with lacquer thinner. Okay, the thinner's dry. I'm going to peel back off the nose badge. Be very careful not to get any dust on it. And we're going to try to set it right down using our registration marks that we had. So we'll just press it down nice and tight. And now it can't be moved. Well, that's it for this week at Vintage Garage. Glad you were here. We had a great day, a lot of accomplishments. We fit the Zeus fasteners to the body of the Royale, mounted it on the chassis, laid out the white trim, and painted it. It came out real nice and we're pleased with the job. Then we got the Lola T492 checked out. It's ready for the race at Mostport. We should get some great in-car video there in a future show. Lastly, we mounted the nose badge on the Royale and that finished the trim work on the car. Next week we have another full show. We need to build the windshield for the Royale RP2. We're going to make that out of plexiglass and the sheet of plexiglass that we have is bigger than the oven in the kitchen. So we're going to have to build an oven for the plexiglass. Then we're going to have to heat the plexiglass and mold it to fit the car. We don't have a mold for the windshield so it should be interesting to see how we do it. Then we're going to load the Lola T492 into the trailer and load the trailer and all our tools and get ready for the trip to Mostport. Lastly, we're going to do a product test. We have a small piece on the transporter that we need to repair and we've heard a lot about JB Weld so we're going to give it a try. In a future show, we'll see how that part held up. So that's it for this week at Vintage Garage. Thanks for coming. Glad you were here. Until next time, keep the shiny side up. We'll see you in a week. If you'd like more information about any of the projects we've worked on today, please visit our website at www.vintagegarage.com. There's a link to our email address on the website. Please email us. We'd like to hear from you. Till next time, keep the shiny side up. Thanks for coming. See you next week.